I would like to take this opportunity to introduce two incredible leaders from VHC Health. One clinical leader, Dr. Ivan Petrovich, and one uh, technology leader, administrative leader, Mike Mastretta. They're both leaders in their fields. They're highly respected amongst their peers, and I can't really think of two better individuals to walk us through how technology and AI can have big impact on the uh, clinical outcomes as well as taking a look at uh, social dip disparities of health. So Mike and Dr. Petrovich, come on up. Thank you. I'll start <laughs> off for the evening. I'm Dr. Petrovich. I'm one of the radiologists here at Virginia Hospital Center. Uh, I am the doctor that you never meet because I'm in the background looking at scans that you'll see uh, when you come into the hospital. And I'm going to talk about how we can leverage using AI to keep us on the forefront of imaging and diagnosis. Whoop, this is a little bit of our intro slides. I apologize. No, you're good. Excellent. So the healthcare sector is a little bit slower to adopt technologies. Uh, due to the complexity, due to patient security, due to privacy. Um, these are all challenges that we have to deal with. Actually, Mike has to deal with on a much larger extent than I do, but are certainly very real. And despite these uh, challenges, we have areas of innovation that we've uh, pushed forward in this hospital. And as I said before, I'm going to be talking about some new technology that I'm hoping that we can push. Excellent. So I want to talk a little bit about AI and CT scanning. Last year at Virginia Hospital Center, we are now a stroke center and now a trauma center. We scanned over 52,000 body parts last year. 52,000 scans is a lot. 12,000 of those are going to be head CTs. I read about 1,000 of those. Um, and they have the ability to change your life. Making an accurate and quick diagnosis is critically important. AI basically takes these images that we, we acquire, sends them to the cloud. They're analyzed within two to five minutes and sends results back for the radiologist to review. Uh, in, in near real time. What does this do for our patient? It provides a faster workflow. We see patients and make diagnoses faster. We can reduce the diagnostic time, reduce the length of stay in both the ER as well as overall hospital length of stay, and reduce any chances for any misdiagnosis. And I want to show you guys an example quickly. One particular example is a head CT. We do, like I said, about 12,000 of these a year. They can be life altering. This patient right here is a large subdural hematoma on the uh, left side of the picture, but it's the patient's right. It's causing midline shift. This is a life-altering diagnosis. If not rapidly treated, can rapidly result in death. Now, that bleed right there, pretty easy to diagnose. My nine-year-old can pick this up with relative ease, right? Now we look at two other patients. These patients both have subdural bleeds. Both of these can be devastating if not accurately diagnosed. I'm going to tell you my 12-year-old can make these diagnoses. Now, both of my kids are going to miss this one. There's a subdural bleed right there layering on the midline faults posteriorly. I'm going to guess most people can see that bright white line. I know it to be blood. I'm probably not going to miss it. But I said, I read about 1,000 of these a year. I may not be perfect every time, but I want to be perfect. And this is where computers can come in and do pattern recognition and identify subtle findings and help make me a better radiologist and diagnose these problems a little bit quicker. So again, my impact is faster workflow. I'll be able to see patients faster, more patients make more accurate diagnosis, reduce length of stay, not just in the emergency room, but your entire visit in the hospital, and also incrementally increase my ability to not ma make any big misses. Because remember, these misses can have life-altering events and changes if, if not made. And I showed you an example here of a head CT. That's just the tip of the iceberg. The software we're looking at also looks for pulmonary emboli, also looks for rib fractures, also looks for cervical spine fractures. I read a lot of cervical spine CTs when a patient has a car accident every single day. So this is technology that can really impact our community and really impact the care we deliver at Virginia Hospital Center. With that, I'll drop the ball over to Mike. Thank you. So population health is something you read about in the news and is out there quite a bit. So here at VHC, we actually started down a population health path in 2021. And it's actually a program that's led by a person named James Mean in, in our, our uh, health system. So one of the things we want to talk about here today is actually just one sliver of this population health uh, component that we're going to focus on. But part of what we're asking for is, since this is a program that's really in its infancy, is some money, some seed money, to bring in some consultants and stuff to help us guide the program 
and get it to where it, could, it needs to be that's out there right now. Um, we're gonna focus right now as a part of this on what we call social determinants of health. And we had a good introduction to that earlier today with my friend over here uh, with her diabetes talk. That's one component of what we're talking about here that's there. But there's an awful lot of work that we need to do out there. What we're talking about and what I'm asking for funding for right now is to blow this out from one clinic to make it system wide so that it's consistent and there's a work group out there that can um, use these, these findings throughout the longitudinal care of a patient that's out there. Um, we have some operational experience, but it's not real deep right now. And that's where bringing in a company like we were talking about with health, it's called Health Management Associates, that's out there. They bought another company called Leather Partners whose focus is exclusively and, and um, is expertise is in the social determinants of health that's out there right now. Um, we met with them earlier in the year and they gave us some things, so we've done some building and some pieces out there that we want to do right now. But there's a lot of community uh, um, services that are out there that need to be built into our Epic EMR so that as the physicians and the clinicians are interviewing and they're asking the appropriate questions that are in the correct languages or um, in the right phraseology that you use on some of these things to get the answers that you want. Some of the people who qualify for this are pretty shy and Michelle will tell you, they're very proud people and they don't necessarily want services. So there's ways that we have to set this up and that we can prompt the clinician to get the right answers out there that are doing this. So um, there's also a re national repository. There's three or four companies out there right now that actually have a repository that we'd like to get a subscription to one of those, link it in, and so that we not only have local services, we would populate some of those ourselves, but we would also have national services available for our patients that are out there, that are working on this, this that's out there. So that's the social determinant side right now. And we also have uh, the impact here. Um, the part that we're doing this, how many people have loaded our app? Our app on your phone, smartphone. Okay, about half, that's good. I'm happy with that, that's good. Um, but what we'd like to do is build out some other functionality that complements this, what we call Care Companion that's out there. So this is an interactive piece that we build onto there, which makes it easier for patients or loved ones to communicate with their care teams that are there. So as we do some of these assignments and some of the referrals out to social determinants, we can follow up and we know they've, they've gone or they haven't gone to some of the services that we've referred them to that's out there. Um, one of the things that we find, I can tell you uh, unscientifically, but we have found some of the, the more indigent patients actually will pay their phone bill, their cell phone bill, before they will pay their rent because they don't want to be disconnected from society out there. So that's one of the reasons we've gone down the app route for some of these technologies that are there is so they can still communicate and things that are there. So how does this work? Right? It really facilitates the care communication between the patient and the care manager. So an example, George is a person that's out there. He's di diagnosed with hypertension. He has a care manager in the hospital that encourages him to use this to stay up on it. So what does Care Companion do for them on this? Each day, it gives them medication reminders, prompts him, you need to take your medication. Don't forget to take this. It's out there. Little pop-ups come up on your phone, just like alerts and things like that that are out there. He's asked to track his weight. So we issue a Bluetooth scale, and we're doing this in one of the programs today, actually, with, in maternity, um, but we don't have this component where we can import the weights. So those weights, which are critical to the hypertension ma management, are now in the EMR for the clinician to look at and review. He's assigned periodic check-ins. So he has little prompts that come up on a calendar, and he says, okay, you need to contact your care manager to make sure everything's okay, and checks in. And then any education materials. If there's anything that we need, maybe he needs some extra education on diabetes for uh, fruit intake. We can push that education out to them through this interactive piece that's out there. So um, that's really what we're talking about here. So um, 
Some other things that are there, medication reminders, we talked about that a little bit, uh, vital signs, progress checking, things of that nature that are there, education contact, and we can also do what we call campaigns through this. So we can do bulk enrollment in different programs and things and solicit out to the population and say, hey, we think this might be valuable to you. Can you sign up for this that's out there right now? So that's what Care Companion does for us. It's really an interactive thing uh, that runs. Some other systems that have put in these programs, um, Sutter Health, for example, two thirds of their patients right now are enrolled in Care Companion, especially in the maternity areas that are there. The maternity, we're talking about that with the rooms. We can add the different, every month, this is what you could be expecting, push those out, some education for those new mothers that are out there and stuff. We do something similar to this today with another third party app, but this allows us to get branded and back into the, our, our uh, health system with VHC. So for, the, for all the three projects we're looking at, a little over a half a million dollars is what we're looking at that's out there. So rolling it all together, we can have pictures, <laughs> smart pictures, very smart pictures, or, or and, I guess I should say, the population health, which is another complement of the programs we have there, and the compare companion, which kind of ties it all together out there with our communications with, with our patients that are there. And obviously, if anybody has any additional questions, Mike and I are both very passionate about technology. And we're going to be right, <laughs> right at the TV table right there. there. <laughs> and I can talk about imaging for hours. No problem. So if anybody has trouble going to sleep tonight, <laughs> I can give my cell phone and I will put you down. Do you diagnose the problem first and then it goes to the cloud? Or do you get the advantage of the cloud and then you look at the x ray or whatever it is? Oh, uh, that's a great question. It really. It really depends on what the indication is and how things are coming in. For example, when we get a stroke patient coming into the hospital, there is a team of physicians whose pagers go off. And I get a phone call saying a stroke is getting on the table. So I will be looking at it in real time, and I would probably be looking at it at the same time as the cloud. Now, when a trauma comes in, and we may get a motor vehicle, say one with four occupants in it, and all four come to the ER, that's seven CTs per person, usually on average. Each CT, if we average, takes about five minutes. I'm looking at 35 minutes per patient, and I've got four of them that just popped up, and I can scan those with my brand new scanner, which we just acquired, in a couple of minutes. So I can get the patients done in a couple of minutes, but I know it's gonna take me about 30 minutes per patient to interpret the images. So having a computer identify which patients have life-threatening injuries and need to be read immediately, that will push them up the queue, let me interpret them, and then provide the care I need to very quickly. That's great, Ivan, thank you. Thank Adam, you. Mike, thank you very much. And we doubled up. We have Dr. Russ McQuay here also for radiology. So I don't know if Dr. McQuay will be hanging out there with, with Ivan and Mike, but I tell you, I, um, I, do I downloaded uh, my VHC, Lola, and I get a lot of notes from Chris Walsh telling me about how I'm not complying on this, not complying on that, and uh, need to pick up my game. So if you haven't downloaded MyVHC Health, you really need to. It's a fantastic application. And, you've, and you heard from, from Mike uh, Mastretta about how it can be a game changer for some of the most underserved members of our community, which at VHC, it's all about the patient. It's all about the community.